Welcome back, Ms. Nona Sartman. Um, we have two Jefferson Capital cases. Um, one is entitled Jefferson Capital versus Tara Lentz, which is Stillman's office. Are you here on that one? I'm not. I'm here for Morrison. All right. Then we also have Jefferson Capital Systems LLC versus Christian Morrison. Mr. Morrison is here with us. He was here early. So let me put this. Ashley known as Hartman is here for the plaintiff. This is an old case, it's 2019 and 19798. Uh, and the judgment is for 7,009 or 8,6706. It was entered in October of 2019. This lawsuit was filed in April of 2019, and the plaintiff made multiple attempts to try to serve Mr. Morrison at a Mechanic Street address in Sturgis or at a Constantine Street address in Three Rivers. Uh, they filed a motion for alternative service and requested a second summons. They made multiple efforts to serve the defendant. Um, they went multiple times in June to attempt to serve the defendant or unable to. So I allowed alternative service. The matter was posted at the Constantine address and mailed. And I'm not sure what the other thing was. So alternative service was allowed and service was affected. The defendant never responded, never had an answer and a judgment entered by default, as I indicated in October of 2019. Now, three and a half years have passed. Well, actually, almost four and a half years. I think what happened is plaintiffs started attempting to collect through garnishment, and Mr. Morrison filed a letter dated March 20th, 2024, asking to dismiss the current judgment, which we treated as a motion to set aside the default. Plaintiff then filed a responsive brief to that motion. And Ms. Nonis Hartman, with the advent of Zoom, it's much easier to simply set these for a hearing uh, with counsel coming in by Zoom. Mr. Morrison, you got sued five years ago. You never answered the lawsuit. You now have filed a motion to dismiss it, which we're treating as a motion to set aside the default. The problem is there's a specific rule regarding the motion to set aside a default. Normally it's to be filed within 21 days of the default. So you're way past that. And there are also rules you have to establish that there was a reasonable legitimate reason for failing to answer the complaint. And secondly, that there's a uh, defense, a meritorious defense. In your pleading, you essentially acknowledge the debt, but um, 
didn't like the way it all went down. Well, that doesn't state any meritorious defense. Um, so what finally brought this to your attention? Did they attempt to garnish your wages? Yes. Okay. Mr. Morrison, what else would you like me to know? Um, that this, I got this car as a 20, 22 to 23 year old kid away at college in Indianapolis. And I didn't have any help from my parents or any outside help with finances. So I went to a buy here, pay here company known as drive time. Well, drive time. All right, you... stop, stop. That ship has sailed. Any defenses you would have had five years ago are gone. Um, this happens a lot. People get sued. They don't do anything about it. They don't do anything about it. They start to garnish their wages, and all of a sudden they wake from slumberland, and then they want to argue the original claim. Uh, that ship sailed. Uh, you've lost those defenses. The question is, was there irregularities in the service, which arguably no, it was done with court authority, and B, is there any meritorious defense? The answer is no. So what you really need to do is discuss some sort of way to do this as a payment plan or something, as opposed to a garnishment. Uh, because we can't go back now to 2019 and have you tell me all why this was an unfair deal with yeah. these rent to own. And I have a lot of these cases. I'm you call them pay now or buy now, pay later. They have very high interest rates. They have a very high failure rate. The cars are repossessed, sold at auction there's a shortfall and defendants like you are paying for a car they don't even have, which goes under the category of paying for a dead horse. So this is lying dormant for five years until they finally caught up with you and attempted to garnish your wages. Um, your, your, your honor, the car was given back all the way back in 2016 with the supporting documents that I gave and it was a voluntary surrender and yeah, the whole just, thing. Um, yeah, just is, a minute. Uh, yeah, that always happens. And that isn't how it works. You don't get to give the car back and get off from under the loan. You give the car back, they sell it at auction, and they're asking you for the shortfall. Plus, that defense is gone. Um, so the deck is stacked against civil unrepresented defendants in these types of cases. I said at a recent judicial conference, my least type of case to handle is this kind. But I don't get to make the rules and I don't get to decide which rules I like and which rules I don't. Uh, I'm not a fan of used car contracts with high interest rates and low um auction sale price with a shortfall. But again, I don't make the rules. Um, so what you wrote was a letter, which I treated as a motion to set aside default. It really isn't a motion to set aside default, but you haven't met the requirements for a motion to set aside the default. Um, I, I, I guess my main thing is I don't understand how I didn't even have a chance to just defend myself the first time around with this and then um they're saying that i owe them all this money yet none of this was reported to the, any of the credit bureaus none of this is even tied to my my credit reports in all three branches um i've been able to go out and get car loans i've you know multiple times and nothing has flagged about a repossession or, or anything, which goes back to the same day of me returning that vehicle. I have a recording where when I signed my lease, they said that as long as you bring the vehicle back, 
we will just resell it and you will be off the hook. You will be in the clear. You would have nothing to worry about. So this entire time, I haven't worried about it. I've been living my life normal. And now 10 years, nine years down the road, now all of a sudden they're trying to garnish me at a new job that I've only been working at for two weeks, but they know I'm working there, but yet they can't get me a subpoena when I'm living in the same city. I just, and now all of a sudden, you know, we have over $4,000 worth of interest that's occurred over this time. Is it, they didn't want me to know about it so that I was trapped or... I, I feel like they let this go so long because they knew they could take advantage of the situation and now they're going to get even more money on a vehicle that in current today's market is nowhere near the amount that I owe. Well, I certainly sympathize that this seems unfair and I can't even say it isn't. Uh, this sale was for a Toyota, 2011 Toyota that you paid too much for. And then by the time you throw in $8,845 of interest at 15.9%, uh, you have a very substantial loan. And uh, so that contract was in 2015. So, at some point in 2016, you returned the vehicle. I would be amazed if someone told you that you could just turn the vehicle in and that would be the end of it because that ain't how it works. I don't know that they make their money off selling cars. I think their money they make their money off lending money at 15 or 16 percent or now 21 percent. Uh, they went through all the legal procedures to try to serve a copy of this judgment on you. I don't know. They went to your house multiple times, at least four. They posted it on your door. They mailed it to you, and you never filed a response to the action. So a default judgment entered. Now, the fact that they didn't report it to any reporting agency, I suppose, is just a benefit for you but this debt is here and you owe it. And yet it, it on a fundamental level feels basically unfair to you, but you signed this contract and these contracts have withstood multiple legal challenges. Uh, these guys didn't just fall off the turnip truck. Um, they are uh, in the business of selling used cars and uh, everything that goes with that. And um, now they finally caught up with you at a, so you're right, it was 2015, it's nine years old. They didn't get around to suing you for this vehicle until 2019. Statute of limitations was six years. So I don't know why it took them three years to file the lawsuit, but they did. Then you didn't do anything about it. And then five more years passed. And here we are, and they're garnishing your wages. Um, so, uh, Ms. Nonis Hartman, what's your response? I mean, Judge, you pretty much covered everything. Um, you know, unfortunately, under the law, he's got no legal argument. You know, I'm not really going to go into the nitty gritty and back and forth about the credit stuff, the unfair, you know, uh, he signed a contract. He owes the money. It is what it is. We have a judgment. So he's yeah. liable for the judgment amount. His motion or request today doesn't um, is legally invalid. So it's requested to, you know, that he, it be denied, required to be denied. And um, as for the other discussions about repayment, you know, unfortunately, at this time, my client obtains a wage garnishment. They want to pursue the gar garnishment. So obviously, he's got other options that he can pursue in terms of payment plan. But as of right now, we would just follow through with the garnishment. All right, Mr. Morrison, I want you to 
listen carefully here. I'm going to deny your motion to set aside this judgment that was entered by default. I mean, I'm just going to file bankruptcy anyway. All so. right, well, there's something, uh, that's one option you have, but there's something else you can do. That's why I want you to listen carefully. They finally caught up with you after nine years and they're garnishing your wages. And nobody likes a wage garnishment because it takes all of your money. What you need to do, and so they're not at this point willing to discuss it, you need to file a motion for installment payments. Uh, you can get the form here at the courthouse. You can get it online. And I can set aside the garnishment and set the payment at something that you can afford, which will attempt to pay off the debt, but not be as onerous as a garnishment. The other option you have is to declare bankruptcy. I'm not sure what other debts you have, um, but Attorney Notice Hartman's hit the nail right on the head whether whatever we think about used car contracts, you sign a lawful contract and you're bound by it. There was a lawsuit, you were found responsible and whether it's fair or unfair, it is what it is, you owe the money. So let me repeat, you need to sooner rather than later, like this week, file a motion for installment payments. And can I, I can set- can I get a pen, yeah. in Your Honor? Yeah, quick, sure. Please. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Uh, where are you working right now? Um, Baker's Body Shop. I've been there for about three months now. Where's that? Uh, located here in Sturgis, Michigan. Now, what we've got for an address is Parkville Road. Um, let's see what you put on your letter. So are you still at Parkville Road? Yes, sir. That has been my address for the last four years, I believe. All right. So the judgment is going to stand and it's going to continue to accrue interest. So the other thing you could do with this, but I anyway, write this down. Motion for installment payments. Uh, then we'll give notice to the plaintiff and they can say we'll accept 250 a month or less or 150 a month or five dollars a month but the this debt has grown over the last several years so you can also discuss it with an attorney that does creditors rights like bankruptcy in the meantime they're going to continue garnishing your wages until we can get this matter heard um so I will do an order denying your motion to set aside the default and allowing the original judgment to stand. Indicate that I advised you to file a motion for installment payments. Uh, that could be used to set aside the default. Sometimes I put, in fact, often I put the parties in a breakout room and see if they can come to an agreement. According to attorney Nonis Hartman, the plaintiff's not interested in that right now. They've kind of got a. Uh, they want the money. They want the money. They got a golden goose. Yeah, and they don't gonna care garnish. about lives. They just want the money. Um, I guess I can't answer that, but very. Anyway, that's why I advise you to file this motion sooner rather than later. Garnishments are very onerous to the person being garnished. They don't consider how much your rent is, what your car payment is, what your medical bills Child are. support they is. Just, Yes, they just take that percentage that's allowed. When I have the motion for installment payments, I take that stuff into consideration. The other thing that can be done is perhaps they can come to an agreement. If you pay us X of money today, we'll settle the whole complaint. 
So sometimes it's like, well, if we can take, I'll just pull numbers out of the air, a $10,000 debt to be collected over the next five years, they might rather take $5,000 cash today. It's called an accommodation. So some of those things can be explored, but you've got perhaps equity on your side or fairness or perceived fairness, but the law is on their side, um, including the garnishment. They've done everything according to the rules and lay people are not familiar with what the rules are. So they're at a distinct disadvantage. You're not entitled to court appointed counsel in civil cases and I try to give you the consideration that I can, but I have to follow the rules. So you owe that amount that's currently due on the judgment. The garnishment stands. Uh, the motion to set aside default is denied and you're advised ASAP to file a motion for installment payments and I'll set up for hearing as soon as I can. All right, you're good to go. Anything Thanks. further? Just one question for me, because I know you had mentioned it and now you just said you'd set it for hearing, which is great. I just want to make sure I receive a copy of his motion if he files it. I know the defendant is required to send it, but just in case, because that doesn't happen too often, um, will the court also send me a copy if they receive it? Yes, court will make sure a plaintiff gets a copy. Thanks, Judge. Good All right, thank you. Thank you, have a great rest of the day. All right, thank you.